however, I'm going to probably, well, I know that I'm going to veer off a great deal. Um, so get your Bible handy. I'm going to be asking for some scriptures to be read just as we look at um, the Word of God this evening. And so we start, I'm not going to backtrack any, I'm going to pick up on row one because I feel like we've um, made headway, we've done good, uh, we've covered the things that we should, and so I'm not going to go back any because I found myself being too redundant. I want to do that. <clears throat> Let's read that first phrase. Just because we act holy or dress holy does not mean we are just because we act holy or we dress holy does not mean that we are holy. The inside may be very unholy. Once again, I said a couple of weeks ago, holiness in definition, you know, you can Google it and you'll find a lot of definitions. You'll find some things about hope and him being holy. Um, all different people have different ideas. But when you look at the Word of God and you understand what holy is, and God says, be holy as I am holy, holy is this. Holiness and living holy is about a relationship. It's contingent upon a relationship with God. If there's no relationship with God, then our acts of, 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 of holiness is, is acts of wanting to redeem or cleanse ourselves or obtain to something ourselves, which we in ourselves cannot do. Uh, Brother Craig, you said it tonight, we can have all the tools, we can have all the things, and, and we can look holy, we can act holy, but if we don't have a relationship with a God who is holy, then, then we've missed the mark altogether. And so sacrifice is about having a relationship with God and living holy. I shared this story before many, many years ago. I want to share it once again. When I was in Bible school, there were particular places on campus where people would go and pray or they would do things. Uh, at, and so you got to know these, these places. And there was a big oak tree that you know uh, was on the girls' side of campus. And a lot of the girls had it as a place where they would go and they would pray. And one day, a uh, wind and thunder and rainstorm came by and that huge oak tree all of a sudden just fell over. I mean, this what appeared to be a big, beautiful oak tree that was uh, looked nourishing and wonderful and looked like it was going to stay in there forever. And lots of people made commitments there and made it their landmark. All of a sudden, it fell over. And then when you looked at it, you understood why, because it looked really good on the outside, but the whole inside of that tree was rotten, and it couldn't withstand the weather, couldn't withstand the rain, the storm, all the elements of that, and so it fell over. We can look good on the outside. We can put on a facade of, 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 of a, a relationship with God or a holy lifestyle. But if it really hasn't been rooted on the inside, there will come a day when the wind will blow and the real stuff will be seen. It may not be seen to everybody right now, but as the wind blows and as the elements have their way, it will show outwardly what is on the inside. And so we need to make sure that we don't think because we do a certain thing that we are holy, but we have a relationship with God. And that is why our sacrifice of praise is we live a holy way because God is holy. And I want to honor God. You know, uh, folks can be asked, well, why do you do this or why do you do that? Well, our church believes that. Well, it's, it's good to have church standards, and it's good to, that, that, that our church as a whole uh, uh, looks, acts, uh, 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 the character is a certain way. But, 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 but the real reason is we live this way because God wants us to live this way. Because God is holy, and we want to be holy. So we want to be holy in our character. We want to be holy in our living. We want to be holy in, in, in our life in, in every way. So uh, the next phrase is, it's not right to say I live, act, or dress this way, therefore I am holy. Instead, we should say I am holy, and that's why I live, act, or dress this way. Amen. 
I am holy. Does God get inside of you and He starts cleaning stuff up? Amen. And I love when the Lord puts us to the fire, whether it's the fire of trial or whether it's the fire of the Holy Ghost. And as He does that, He melts us. He changes the uh, uh, the the uh, 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 the state of what we are. And as He melts us, He takes off the dross and He reflects Himself on us. And because He is holy, we are holy because of the fire of the Holy Ghost and also because of the fire that we go through our tests and our trials and our growth periods. And we wind up saying, wow, I see more of God in me. Once again, several weeks ago, I ministered on the cycles of life. Solomon said, we love the cycles of life. Has anyone noticed that summer is going really fast? I've noticed it's going really, really fast. And I love this time of year on into autumn. It's just, it's just the best time ever. Brother Doug, I'm sorry. I know that you like winter, but that is just not my thing. I don't like it. I, you know, there are, there are things about winter that I am a little bit like. Uh, I, I would rather um, I would rather have that spring, and then particularly as you come into summer, not the scorching hot weather, but uh, you know, in the fall, and it seems like it goes really, really fast. And uh, so I, I, I've talked with people, and, and they said I don't understand. I'm in this place in my life where it seems like I don't like this. I don't like what's happening. I don't like what's happening in my family. I can hardly find any good. It just seems like I'm really being put to the test. And I'm praying. I'm trying to serve God. And I'm trying to be in the Word of God. I'm trying to do what's right. And it just seems like I'm in this, and it's forever long. Those cycles do seem long. I'm sorry. January, February, March seems very long to me. I wish I could play. push it fast forward, but I don't want to waste my time. I know everything's there for a reason. But you don't have to worry about fast forward happening in June, July, August, September. I mean, because it's, it's fast. Sometimes when we're in those cycles where it doesn't seem like it's going fast, God's working something in our life. And God's perfecting His holiness in us. And so it's as we're in those seasons, those cycles, because He said in, 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 in His time, He makes everything beautiful. In his time. We have to trust that God is working and making something beautiful in us. We have to give ourselves the ability to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so it's about becoming holy as he's holy, as we're the cycles, the ones that go fast, but also the ones that go slow, knowing that he's working in us. Holiness is a lifestyle that glorifies God. Holiness is a lifestyle that glorifies God, that pleases, that pleases and obeys God. Not a certain way we dress or a certain way we live, but holiness is from the inside out. Holiness is from the inside out. I think that every one of us here who have grown our faith can tell you it has to be on the inside protruding outward. Because when we are put to the test, how many of you have ever been really put to the test? The pressure is on. Amen. Uh, whatever that is, everybody's test is different. But all of a sudden, psh, it can spew it out. And sometimes you may realize that not everything that you realize was in there, isn't it? But it's showing that God is working. But there are moments where I realize, wow, oh, God, you are working. I would have never responded this way before. You're working, I'm living holy. And so what's on the inside is coming from the outside. You see, the Bible says this, that our tongues... Uh, 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 from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. How many of you ever uh, uh, ever went to a well outside and you had a pump and you had a crowd? You ever do that? You know what I'm talking about? Any of you ever do that? We had one of them in our field when I was a kid growing up and you'd have to crowd and you're pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping and all of a sudden there'd be they come out. You see, that's the way it is with our mouth. What is on the inside when we are primed and we are pumped? It's going to come on the outside. 
And so all this has to be on the inside. Everything about us, we can look beautiful. Uh, you, can take, you can take a pig and you can take and you wash them up and you can put a real pretty white dress on that little pig, Brother uh, Eli, that little pot belly pig. And uh, you know, if he gets close to a mud hole, she gets close to a mud hole, what's she going to do? She's going to go over there and wall her around in the mud. You know why? Because inside of her is a nature to roll around in the mud. But God, when He gets a hold of us and He cleanses us, that old nature of the old man that wants to get involved and roll around in the things of this world is out. We don't like those things any longer. And so the Bible says that God is a spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. And I'm going to stop there for a second. Now we've been talking a little bit about dress. Let's just stop here. Let's, let's focus on this for a moment. Let's talk about, well, God, so we're talking about our lifestyle. We're talking about our dress. How is it that you want us to please you? I think, first of all, let's, let's turn to Genesis chapter number 1. Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 27. The Bible says, and God created man in his own image. In the image of God created He Him. Male and female, He created He them. One thing that we have to realize in, in, in how a believer should dress is that there are distinctions between men and women. Now, the world wants to break down those distinctions. It's getting worse and worse. You know, uh, men dressing like women, women dressing like men. You know, sometimes I've had to deal with people that I don't really know if they're a man or a woman. It puts me in an uncomfortable place. God didn't intend for it to be that way. I've offended people because I thought that they were the opposite gender, not because I was intentionally trying to hurt them. But, but God created male and female. I'm not trying to upset anybody's apple cart tonight, but that's just the way it is. He created male and female. And so when men and women start dressing alike and there's a blending and there's this distinction in what God has created them to be and act like that, you know, some uh, men act more like a woman than a woman does and some women act more like a man than a man does. Uh, I'm saying, uh, you know, it, 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 God created distinctions. And so God wants there to be a distinction between man and woman. And uh, so let me just say that when a baby is born, and, and I don't care what, what psychologist says, I don't care what new philosophy says, we'll let them decide. When a child is born, it's already decided. It's already completely decided by God. He has already atomically decided if they are male or whether they are female. And they can say, I'm a man trapped in a woman's body or vice versa. No, God's already created you, and you need to be who God created you to be. And if somewhere down the line of life you've got your wires crossed, then you need to pray it through. Amen. So I'm not going to do a lot there anymore on that. But then in Deuteronomy 22, Verse number 5, the Bible says, Woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man, neither shall a man put on the, uh, a woman's garments, for all who do so are an abomination unto the Lord. And so we look at that, and uh, I did not look, uh, Goodwin shared about a transgender uh, speaking in a library. I don't want a transgender talking to my daughters. I don't. That's not what I want teaching my daughters. God made a distinction. And you know what? In our home, we're going to honor God because God makes a distinction. And so, uh, you know, I don't want my girls dressing like little boys and acting like little boys. And, and vice versa, I don't want little boys. You know, there's, there's a distinction. So in being holy, there is a distinction in gender. We have nowadays all these clothes that are coming out and things that are coming out that are uh, 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 gender neutral. You know, can I... Did it make us gender neutral? He made us, he made us male or female. And we need to be rejoicing who he made us to be. So we we build off of that as, as we move on. And, and so does 
does the question is, does the clothing that I, I wear, does it display my surrender and my commitment to God? And so that is on so many levels, so, so many levels. And I won't be able to touch it all tonight. But someone read Romans 12.1. Romans 12.1. Someone right after Timothy there, pick up and read Titus 2, 11 and 12. Someone else read 1 Timothy 2, and I can't even read my handwriting, let me make sure.
uh, of just the way that they dress. And we should be honoring God, and we should be honoring our brothers and our sisters and, 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 and desires for God to work and move. So when we say that we're denying ungodliness, is God pleased in this? Is it about God being represented in our bodies and everything in our life? Or is it about the flesh being uh, uh, manifested and shown higher than God? Now once again, tonight, and I'll get there in a moment, I don't think that we need to dress like we live in 1900. In fact, that's probably an oddity. You know what I mean? Like, it's an oddity. Do I believe that, and I'll get farther in this, but we have to be careful even the way that we fashion ourselves in what we purchase and buy. Does that, does that become our identifier? But I love what the Word of God says. That we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. We need to live presently. And I, mean, I think that means that we need to live without, without uh, uh, making a skeptical out of ourselves. But we need to live godly in the moment. I believe that we can dress, um, I don't want to say this tonight. Now, you know, if you like the 1980s, that's fine. I work with a lady, she, she loves the 80s, and she loves all the clothing. That's fine. I was in high school then. Now, I don't really feel like dressing like a teenager anymore. I'm not 40 now. <laughs> you know, there comes a time in life where, uh, you know, I'm not worried about grandma going all that, you know, teenage, you know what I mean? Like, so, but we can live presently. We can dress appropriately for the age, but still dress godly. Are you with me? Because I think as people of God, we need to live presently. But we can show the world that we can live God presently. So I want to read 1 Timothy 2, verse 9 and 10. with what a child of God would wear. You know, as my girls get older, Sister Susan, it's going to be sometimes hard to go to Walmart because I can't believe the Bulgarian people wearing the shirts. This, he is addressing the women, men alike, but, 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 but more so, he is looking at the women and how they should dress. And he says, in modest apparel. And he, he says that they should adorn themselves with what makes them look like a child of God. I don't think that a Christian woman should be running around looking like a harlot. There's a difference. Because God has saved. And you know what? There is also... Can I just add a few things in here? And I wasn't intending on saying this. You know, sometimes, you know, women in our day and age, and I don't care if you want to wear a cucumber over your eyeball or not. You know, I, I do it at home. I won't see you, right? Um, uh, it, whatever you want to do for your anti-aging solutions, or your, you know. But, but the Word of God also says that it is the elderly women, the older women, that will teach the younger women. There's nothing wrong with having life experience. And the Bible says that gray hair, and I'm getting lots of them these days, are a sign of wisdom. And so exercise it as godly wisdom. And you know what? Love who you are as you look in the mirror. Because we're going through the cycles of life, and there's nothing wrong with keeping yourself uh, modestly and godly, but loving who you are. 
There are some folks that are constantly getting injections and doing this and doing that without ever loving who God made them to be in the mirror. There's a real crisis of their identity. Their identity needs to be found in Christ. And there's a fear of aging. There's a fear of wrinkles. There's a fear of, uh, of gray hair. Or what, what, whatever all that is. I'm not saying tonight don't keep yourself. I believe that we should keep ourselves. And we should keep ourselves nice. But we also should be appreciative for who we are and where we are in Christ Jesus. And our adorning should be more of godliness than anything else. May when folks look at uh, 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 you ladies, may, may they say, there is a godly lady. And uh, so the Word of God goes on down and talks about a sobriety, uh, that, that idea of self-restraint. You know, there are some women that have no self-restraint. They fly off the handle, and, 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 uh, and let me say this in a nice way, men can do this to be a big mouth. And, and, and that's not godly. The Word of God says, uh, and, and sobriety, uh, of that... Uh, 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 that idea, once again, of self restraint. I'm sorry. Same face of this is 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 is, is uh, 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 to, uh, not to be bold or forward, uh, and, and particularly to men when it talks about that and uh, a sobriety, that self restraint, not with uh, broadened hair. You know, there are some folks that think that they have to go to extremes. You know, let me just say, you know, uh, we live in a society where. You don't know what color hair. I mean, everything is in all days. Uh, is there one? What about robing ourselves in Christ? Is there that much attention given to robing in Christ and dressing in Christ? And he goes on down to say, or gold, gold, or pearls. And and you know, I don't think that that he's necessarily in this place. I don't think he's necessarily condemning them in general, but he's he's saying, but when that is used to promote or or they, or or or, or, um, or uh, adorn, that's what I'm looking for. A Christian, particularly a Christian woman, when that is what is used instead of a Christian character, then it is for. If some folks would spend as much time in the presence of God as what they do in the presence of the latest and greatest fashions, God help us to live more. Or costly array, men or women who live primarily to dress for the outward than ever taking care of the inward. It is a problem. Do you hear me? When people will spend or want things that take care of the outward more than they worry about taking care of the inward, it's a problem. We've been called to holy living. And so the question is, once again, our dress, is it honoring to God? Is it distinctive? Is it that we're more worried about our attire being taken care of in a godly fashion? Or are we conformed to this world that, that we're worried about what the state of this world is more than a godly state? The second thing is this. Have we focused on our heart or have we focused on our wardrobe? Someone read 1 Samuel 16.7. 1 Samuel 16.7. Someone else read Proverbs 31, verse number 30. Someone have 1 Samuel 16, 7. The Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him, but the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For a man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. There's so much that can be said here. And I'm going to look at this in a different realm tonight than what I typically look at it. Because I want to bring you fresh things to us. But God, do we spend more time 
cultivating the, the appearance of our heart. We know what our heart is. I mean, our heart is desperately wicked. We can't trust it. But we know what we're cultivating in our heart. Or do we spend more time cultivating a wardrobe? That we want to look good on the outside. If that's by exercise, if it's supposed to by diet, whether it's by tanning, whether it's by grooming in a particular way, whether it's by fashion, there's all kinds of things that you can do on the outside, and you can spend your time working and doing those things. Yes, I believe our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and we should take care of that. But I'm saying tonight, do we spend more time cultivating the, 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 the charm and the beauty and, 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 and the godliness and the loveliness of our heart? Or do we spend more time cultivating what is on the outside appearance? That's holy living when we deal more with the inside. Amen. The, the, the third thing, uh, am I making clothing choices with transformed thinking? So once again, we are not conformed to this world, but we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. Let me just share a little experience with you that we had recently. My wife and I, we uh, we went to Boscov's. Um, we, you, you know, we dress well and really like it. So, um, you know, we most often can't thrift that because you don't go to Goodwill and find two of everything. Uh, we like to do that. It's what we like to do. They finally change their mind someday. Or the parents, let's do it. Leave me alone. Okay, so uh, and we like that, and so uh, in doing so, we we um, we we uh, we have we have in the past go to the sales racks and boss couples have this amazing sale, and uh, 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 so we went there and uh, we were finding clothes for our girls, and we decided that probably next year they're going to be the next step up, and so they're going to be like not in this like little kids. I don't know all these terms for. What, what they are, but it was the next step up. And we were really, really discouraged because we went looking through the rocks, finding them things for church and and, and, and should they go to preschool. We were looking and everything <coughs> was uh, uh, <coughs> cut way low, or cut way low on the back, way above their knees, and, and we wanted to keep them as modest as we can. <coughs> and we literally found nothing on their such racks. I said to my wife, what are we training our little girls and our society. We are training them and equipping them even before they hit puberty and their little minds are knowing and thinking. We're training them to be provocative and immodest because that's what society is doing. And so uh, we we thank God that you know uh, there, there's great little places that that that, that they, they have the same uh, ideology as us and standards that they want to uh, clothe their little, little girls appropriately, they will be able to go there. And you know what? It'll be, it's well worth the extra buck if we got to do that. You make sure that they're trained appropriately. But, but what I'm trying to say is we cannot be conformed to the things of this world, but we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we want to make sure that, that, that we are cultivating our heart and everything that we dress is honoring to God. And, and when folks see us, they don't see a label or a tag or some fashion, but they see someone who loves God and has a relationship with God and because they are in this holy relationship with God, they want everything about their life to be holy from their very appearance to the way their attitude is, to the way that their character is, to the way that they have their work ethic is, to the way that their relationships are and so we want to live holy on every level and so it's not that we live a particular standard to be saved, but because we are saved we say, man, it's changed my life in every way. And I don't want to be anything like this world. And I don't want ungodliness in my life. But I want godliness in our life. And I, and I want my life to honor God on every level. And so, are we making clothing choices that, 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 that with, with a transformed thinking? The other thing that even we ask ourselves when we think about our clothing and our dress, are we content with what we have? Are we? Do you look and say, man, I'm thankful for what God has given me. I'm thankful. Are you thankful for what God has given you in this moment? Or is your heart very discontent? That goes from 
you know, our jobs, holiness is there, being content, to you know, our revenue, there's nothing wrong with wanting to gain, be able to cry out for our family, and, and to be able to live more comfortably. Nothing wrong with that. But if we're so discontent, God help us to live holy and be content with such things that He has given us. And you can reference Matthew 6, 28 through 30. Even our vehicles, our home, what we have, learning to be content. The word is said, God says, godliness with contentment is a great gain. Be content with what God has provided and given to us. The next thing is, am I practicing modesty and discretion in what I wear? Let me just say, modesty is not anti-fashion. Because it's always in God's fashion. And so when we wear, are we being dis using discretion in what we're wearing? Uh, there are some some folks that, you know, I, I meet a lot of people, and you know, there's some kids that will only wear clothing if it comes from a particular store. But I'm not quite sure who created the monster, it was mom and dad, or the society, or, or what it is. You know what? If we cannot say that I'm content with what I have, and as long as it's modest and godly, that's what matters to me. We're not defined by a name brand. We wonder why society is where it's at with depression, why there's anxiety and fear. Our society is being taught that you are someone because you wear a particular label or you carry a particular brand with you. Our identity should never be found in any type of clothing that we wear. Our identity should be found in Jesus Christ. Someone read Proverbs 31, verse number 25, the first part of that. Strength and honor are our clothing. Our lives should have the demeanor that we honor God. And we are strong because He has been strong in us. Our clothing uh, choices should bring glory unto God. This is the last one. And we'll get back to our notes. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. Body and in our body. 
I think that that comes down to lots of things. That comes down to our health and the way that we eat and the habits that we have and even the way that we sleep or we're taking care of our bodies. It's all kinds of things, but also loving ourselves for who God made us to be. You may look in the mirror and say, man, i got a big nose. You know what? God made that nose. You better love it. Or you may look in the mirror and say, I don't like the color of my eyes. You better love those eyes because God made them perfect just for you. And you may say, I don't like my hair or my lack of hair. You know, but God made you, you, whether He gave you lots of hair or He gave you no hair. Right? So we need to love and we need to honor God. I know it sounds silly tonight, but really, we the church needs to hear that. We need to know that we're loved of God and our bodies are God's. So everything that goes in it and out of it should bring glory to God. Once again, there are a lot of people. We live in a very religious area. A lot of religiosity. I met some people that are legalistic. They think that they're getting to heaven because of the way that they're dressed. It's going to be a sad day, Brother Craig, when they get there and realize they don't have the matches. You know, and there's death because they've lost the most, most important thing, and that's salvation through Jesus Christ. And when He gets in you and washes you and changes you, it will change everything about your life. It will help you be the man that He wants you to be, a man of courage, a man of strength, a man of integrity. It will help you be the woman that God wants you to be. You will be the modest lady who may, others may look and say, oh, that, that, she, she has a lot of self-restraint, but yet she is powerful. How many have ever met a, a godly, godly women and they have self-restraint, but yet they are powerful? They're a powerhouse because God is a So, you know, I don't care if you put a, 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 a bow in your hair. I don't care about that. I know some people uh, you should watch. But if your hair is all wrapped up and you spend hundreds of dollars on it and you think that that's what brings you your glory, then you ain't looking so good before God when you are or if you found the latest fashions and you look trendy, but you missed out on the lost theology. Or the distinction of theology. We need to live more. I hope I brought this about tonight in such a way that it presents to you that challenges us. Some people may not be challenged by